Okay, here's another real world example of why you want a surge protector on your RV. Not just a surge protector, but one that protects you from low voltage. Uh, this camper, uh, the complaint was the uh, one air conditioner would run, but if you turn on more than one, it would shut down, it was giving trouble, something was going on. So coming in here with a volt ohm meter, there was 122 volts on one leg, but only 106 on the other. And a little further investigation, this is what we found. Look at the corrosion, the arcing. You can see the arcing had been taking place on that live wire. And we've been getting a lot of rain here. And of course also you can see what, what's, what's right next to it is water. And just think of the possibilities if you was out here barefooted, walking around your RV at night and after a rainstorm. So it's another reason to keep your shoes on too. So they're going to have to come out here. I don't know what the repair is going to be as far as digging up that line. I'm assuming they can make a sealed repair underground or replace all the wire. Not really for sure. But I thought that was interesting. So that's why you want to get yourself a, uh, a surge protector on your RV to uh, protect your compressors, protect your electronics. All right, stay tuned. We'll add more. Well, it's the next day. Uh, uh, the electrician has did come by and repair supposedly repaired it but I don't like it I'm not an electrician but I don't like what I'm seeing so I mean you can see what what they've done I dug this out because I wanted to see what kind of work they did because I was just kind of curious how they was going to repair it if it was going to dig it up and run and do a whole new run or not and of course they didn't they were just in and out pretty quick so they've tapped into that old old wire but what I don't like, because you can see here, that's a, there's a 120, there's a, another 120 behind it, that's a neutral wire. But look how this metal box is digging into it. Yeah, so that, that should be in conduit. That's pretty scary stuff. Because you can imagine what's going to happen in a couple of years. That sharp edge, and these wires tend to move with, with te temperature changes and fluctuations. Of course in this sand, stuff's always shifting down here in this Florida sand. So in time, that's going to touch, and this box is going to be have 120 volts live on it. So um, I think I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to the owner about it. We'll, we'll come back here ourselves. We'll we'll put some kind of protection on this. But I know back at home in Kentucky, whenever you have wires coming out like this, you you have to uh, run it down and conduit it. I think it was at least about two foot into the ground. Uh, you know, then you can have it direct buried. But when it leaves a box like this, it should be protected. That's not protected. So, uh, and how many more boxes are like that in, in campgrounds all over the place? And just as I pull back, look, look what our water is right here. So in a few years, if that, that gets damaged and this box goes live, some kids out here barefooted, turns on the water spigot, and that water runs in there and they're barefooted and they lean up and touch that panel, get grounded. That could be very bad. Um, so I got a close-up picture too. I'm going to show you of, of the corrosion on that wire when I get back to the RV. But we're going to do something to make make this better. I sure don't like it. So uh, so stay tuned. Let me get back to the RV and I'm going to point out a few more things. All right, I'm back in my RV and this is a picture the owner at that campsite who stays there year-round actually sent me a picture of this of this cable up close and you can see the strands of the aluminum cable and all the corrosion. Look at the charring, how the rubber had melted, where it had been arcing, getting hot. Pretty scary stuff. All right, now let me show you what I do in our RV to try to keep ourselves safe. Okay, well, one thing I did years ago is I've, I've added these devices here onto my breaker box. Because we're 50 amps, so we've got two legs coming in. And there's a little device, you can see my breaker panels right down there. I found this little device, I forget what they're called, but they're like a little round donut ring. They slide down onto the main wire coming into your into your panel. And then you tie that into these little meters and that will tell you exactly what's going on, your voltage and your amp draw. So when I'm if I'm running ceramic heaters or anything in the winter time, I can see the load on each leg, so I'm not overdoing anything. But also I can monitor the campground voltage. If something's getting low, I can see it right here. But I've also got uh, another device outside that uh, even goes a step further. Okay, so I'm outside my RV here, and we're in the same campground, and you can see water right next to the meter box within inches. Same situation. Hopefully my wires aren't being pinched. But one thing I got here is uh, I purchased this from Progressive Industries. 
What model have I got? There it is, the EMS HW50C, because we've got a 50 amp service. Now years ago, I bought only a surge protector, because I guess that would only protect you, of course, in a surge. So if you had a lightning strike nearby, that may protect your components in your RV if you have high voltage come in. But after RVing for 10 years, I find more likely what we run into is a low voltage situation. Because you can see our meter up here, it's telling me exactly what's going on. Uh, line 1, 121 volts, 0 amp draw. Line 2, 120 volts, pulling 8 amps. And I would highly recommend that everyone would have one of these. Uh, well, I think there's another company that makes another one, but I like this one with my research. I like the reviews on it. It was an easy install. It's got a good warranty with it. And uh, it's it saved me a couple times. One campground I was at, and I did a... a a video on it. Uh, I think I said re real world example of why you need one of these devices that was in the subject line and you can see uh, how it came in handy. I think in that situation I plugged up and I noticed we wasn't getting any power into the RV. Of course I came out here and looked to see what was going on and on one leg only had like 90 volts so this device would not allow the power to pass through so and that's a great feature so even if you're in a campground when you first plug up everything may be great but then the weekend comes along you all the other campers show up everybody starts running their air conditioners and you're at the end of the line now you run low voltage and if you get down i think around 105 i think our air conditioners require a minimum of, of 105 volts but i could have had a scenario in that campground if, if i didn't know it i was only at 90 volts my compressor would have tried to come on and just sit there and hum and possibly burn itself out. So I think this is a very wise investment. Something, you should, something we all should have. And let me see one more thing. Something else I want to talk about is the term hot skin condition. If you've never heard of that term, just Google it and you'll see videos on what it is and, and how it happens. But these are a great tool to have. These are proximity testers. Uh, volt alert, probably got a number on here somewhere. Focus, focus. Anyway, you get these on Amazon, even Harbor Freight and stuff has them. It's a great little tool, but you can take this tool up to your step. If you have a hot skin condition, that thing will light up and let you know. A hot skin condition is where if you lose your ground, and maybe you got a, an appliance or something to short it out in the RV, because we're on rubber tires, now the, all the frame of the RV is now 120 volts. And that's very dangerous. In fact, you know, there's cases where people have been electrocuted and killed because it was barefooted and it uh, came a little rain. They don't realize there's a problem with the extension cord. There's a bad, there's not a good ground. They come up, they put their hand on the camper and they get, they create, they can, shoot, hang on, get my word straight. They put their hand on the RV and they complete the path. So it goes right down through their feet, they're barefooted and that's the last thing they ever do. So that does happen. I don't, it's not real common, but there's cases where that does. So. I guess a recommendation in campgrounds for electrical safety, if you've got kids running around, one thing, make sure they keep their shoes on. That might be a helpful thing, but get your device like we got back there that's going to monitor your electrical system and, and try to keep yourself safe. But uh, I'm going to go back down there and talk to the owner when he gets back uh, at his camper and see what we can do about making him uh, a little bit safer to get some kind of protection down on the bottom of that box, get some conduit around it or something. But thanks for watching. I guess that's all I got. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.